good evening everybody um, thank you for attending the the second meeting in our series of meetings concerning the Selwood Garden community plans uh, the intention of this meeting is to gather as much feedback as we can from members of the public which will help us formulate our official response um, before we get into the running of the meeting a few housekeeping points please Firstly, this meeting is being recorded and live streamed in YouTube tonight. Uh, the recording will be available for you to watch on YouTube at any time, and we will post the link to this on our website after the meeting. Uh, we will be running this meet tonight's meeting as a safe space. And, and what we mean by that is we encourage all participants to be respectful of others' views and be mindful that what you say may impact on the emotions and feelings of others taking part. Um, in a moment, Jane Llewellyn, the Planning Officer for Froome Town Council, will briefly talk through the Town Council's previous comments and what our involvement has been in the consultation process so far. Following this, and in order to hear from, you as many as possible, from as many of you as possible, we have set up a number of focus groups, which you have been asked to specify when you registered. These groups will be facilitated by a councillor or member of staff. Um, you made two choices and where possible we have built the groups around these choices but please bear with us as it's all a bit new to us and if there are hiccups we will try and sort them out as we go along. Each group will last for 20 minutes but we suggest you spend 15 minutes in the discussion and then the final five minutes at the end summarising the thoughts. Um, each group will then be asked to present a brief summary to the main meeting. Um, we will then go into a second breakout session and repeat. We hope to have a 15 minute session at the end for any additional questions um, and all being well, we should finish around 8.30 ish. Um, uh, when we get to the questions and answers sessions, and I'm sure you appreciate, we have around 50 people participating and registered for this mm -hmm. meeting. We wish to avoid lots of people contributing at once. Therefore, please post your, your, your question in the chat facility at the bottom of your screen. These questions will then be answered if we can. If not, we will endeavour to in include those in our discussions of next week. <coughs> As mentioned, the intention of this meeting is to hear from residents of Froome. We will be holding an extraordinary council meeting next Wednesday, the 28th, when a formal response from Froome Town Council will be decided upon. Therefore, if we do not get round to answering your specific question tonight, please rest assured they will be read and taken into consideration when forming our response. <coughs> And that's it. And that I'll pass over to um, Jane, who's going to do an introduction. Thank you very much. Hopefully you'll have all had the opportunity to see the presentation from LBA last week, watch the recording on YouTube or look to the proposals on their website. I'm not going to go through the proposals in detail again. This meeting is all about getting your feedback to help inform the Town Council's response. There are a few things, though, that I would like to set out before we start our discussions. So firstly, the Town Council invites all individuals and developers to discuss their plans with us in advance of submitting their applications to MENDIP. This invitation is published on our website and we do this because we think it's better to work with people to try and influence any proposals before the final plans are submitted to MENDIP. By doing this, we're not saying that we support the proposals, but because it is possible that applications could be approved by MENDIP, our aim is to work with the developers to ensure that <clears throat> excuse me, all developers benefit, sorry, developments benefit the town. In the case of Selwood Garden community pros proposals, because we have produced the neighbourhood plan, we were invited to take part in the design review process, which also included Mendip District Council. The design review panel operates nationally, providing impartial, multidisciplinary, constructive review process during the pre-application stage of the planning process. All of this hopefully contributes towards better design developments. We have been very clear with the developers from the start that by working with them through this process, it does not mean that we are supportive of the proposals. And if we think it's necessary, we will object to the planning application. And that is a view that will be formed once we have seen all the accompanying reports and information that will be submitted with the outline planning application. The Town Council's response to the first consultation was based on the vision, core objectives and policies contained within Froome's neighbourhood plan. And the plan sets out that new development should, and I'm just going to summarise these briefly, it may not seem brief, but I'll try and be brief. Uh, so 
we aim to deliver housing to meet the demands of a growing population now and in the future, ensuring it's inclusive, appropriate and accessible to people of all ages and circumstances. To provide a range of land and buildings for employment facilities, provide integrated transport strategy, delivering links and expanding the existing cycle network with improved access to the railway station and provide safe priority routes for pedestrian and cyclists. That there must be a consistent approach to placemaking across the site, ensuring that any outline consent is not diluted in terms of quality and design by setting out design codes. That the green infrastructure associated with the River Froome corridor is maintained and enhanced and provides informal recreation areas, additional sports and leisure facilities, parks, open spaces and allotments. We confirmed that we felt that all of the things listed as desirable in their first consultation uh, should be included within the essential list and that provision should also be made for vocational training. From the beginning of our discussions with the developers, we've been very clear that any development should be a seamless extension to the town and that the new community is integrated with Froome both physically and socially that it must be well connected and integrated both within the boundaries of the settlement and the existing community. Uh, we also want to ensure that development provides benefits to the existing community of Froome and Selwood, as well as future residents. So, and we're also very aware that there's a lot of concern around the number of new houses being proposed. Uh, it, and in that respect, it's the statutory duty of the district council to set out how many houses each town will be required to provide during the life of their local plan, which currently runs until 2029. I have asked Mendip District Council to confirm where we are in relation to the number of houses that Froome will have to accommodate. And I'll set out all these numbers and the implications of that in my report to council next week. There are currently no alternative sites for consideration. There may be suggestions for alternative sites, but no firm proposals to consider. To say there are better locations available would not be considered a defence of these proposals. So for now, we need to concentrate on what's before us and to set out either why we think it's not an acceptable development or what could make this development better. And lastly, apologies to anyone who has emailed me a question um, and hasn't had a response yet. I've had a lot of questions and I'm working through them and I will respond to them as soon as I can. Thank you. <clears throat> and now I will go to Laura to open the breakout rooms, if that's okay. Please bear with us here. <laughs> yeah, apologies, could you just give me just a minute or two? Just Zoom's not playing ball, just a few seconds. <laughs> Just, just so everybody is aware, uh, you will you will see a message on your screen that will invite you to join the breakout room. Um, you will go into uh, either of the two that you chose for discussion. We won't be able to tell you until you get there which session you will join first. So the facilitator will just identify which topic that you're going to be discussed. And then when we do the second round, hopefully, if all goes well, you will then go in to discuss your second topic. Okay, excellent. I hope you all had a, a, a good discussion. What I'm going to do now is invite each group just to summarise for a few minutes um, any, any salient points that came out of that discussion. So I think we had two vision and principles groups. So um, the first group, which was chaired by Ali, perhaps um, Ali Barclay, if, um, if you or someone from your group could just um, quickly summarise. Um, well, I'm, give the option to anybody else feeding back sorry group but um uh, basically we had a, a a split uh between the very positive which was actually a minority and a very uh, negative view of the whole vision and design principle uh, some of the negative feelings were about this is promising everything but actually will it deliver a real uh, uncertainty about whether it, the end result uh, and also that it's the wrong place on, on a very beautiful green piece of land and will change Froome from a market town to something else. And on the positive side, a real sense of a culture change in development, 
that uh, and are really impressed with the design, really impressed with the principles and a belief that the local architects will actually enable something really good to happen to Froome. Great, excellent. Thank you very much. Um, good split. I'm sure that's going to be replicated as we go through. Um, Jane, I think you were um, chairing the other uh, group on vision and principles. I did, yes. Someone else could uh, report. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, feedback. Um, uh, very similar to, to the points that um, Ali's just set out, actually. Uh, whilst there wasn't anybody uh, who had any positive thoughts in my group, um, when talking about the vision, um, they felt that it was very difficult to agree the vision because actually they, they couldn't get past the fact that this was such a big development and the impact that it would have actually the, they felt the vision was meaningless um, there was concern over how the when the sites are are split up um, and developers come in how you know how they could be assured about the quality and design of the development um, and also some concerns about how the how we could be assured that the infrastructure would be provided. Thank you. Excellent, great, thanks very much. Um, if I move on to the, um, the Open Spaces and Recreation Group, um, which I think Kate Hallard and Hannah were, um, were called. Yeah, hi, I can give you some feedback on that. Um, so the significant concern was the loss of green space uh, in an area that is prone to flooding and um, a conversation around the wetland area and, and, it, and in fact a concern that that, that land is not, um, not being proposed for sale or, or available for purchase. So whether in fact, the, particularly the land at the, at the bottom edge along the river um, and whether in fact that would mean a significant reduction in the, the green space and recreation space available. There was a concern that the wetlands are being proposed as, as wetland and meadowland and recreation space, and that that not, might not be conducive to local natural habitats for wildlife. Um, a loss of hedgerows and trees, and whilst they have been built into the plan at this stage, can that be maintained in the future? Um, and discussion around um, whether actually the um, the dual use will work in terms of the, the flooding and the dry attenuation that is being proposed, the basins that are in those um, recreation spaces and whether that will mean that actually have boggy unusable space rather than lush green recreation space. So um, that, was, that was broadly where we were at and if we'd had another half an hour, we probably would have got to what we thought about the, play, the designs of the play equipment, et cetera but we didn't get there. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks very much for that, uh, Kate. Um, I'll move on to the um, Heritage, and, Heritage and Community Group, which I think, Sarah, I think you had a few technical issues, but hopefully you... Uh... I did have a few technical issues, but actually there were some positive things to, positive ideas to come out of that discussion um, from Alison Douthway, who has uh, a daughter who suffers from um, some severe disabilities and one of the things that she was pointing out was that it may well offer scope to develop services for young people transitioning through their life. Uh, we spend a lot of time thinking about care for the elderly and people who are struggling at the later stages of their life but maybe there's scope here to bring about something that can support younger people and, and, and people who still have you know things that they are you know able and willing and, 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 and have capacity to do in their life so uh, you know opportunities for employment and, and leisure uh, in a way that we don't have in the town currently so that was that was a positive aspect of that discussion um, you know a, a, again the, the discussion around how that how that fits into the environment and what the trade-off would be to bring that into Froome is 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 the same as everyone how how's that going to balance itself out mm. right. sorry dog bark <laughs> <laughs> thanks thanks for that thanks for that sarah um if i could move on to um the highways and active travel group i'm sure that was a an interesting uh, conversation uh, paul i think you were uh, looking after that one 
Yeah, yeah, thanks, Steve. Yeah, we had a bit of uh, an interesting conversation. Um, I think, I think, well, you know, a list of things we've got, but the, the kind of main thing really, I think, is really just the sheer size of what's being proposed. 1,700 houses um, will inevitably bring, you know, potentially 4,000 people and a huge amount of uh, extra pressure on our infrastructure. Um, it was considered that the the road infrastructure in Froome is already completely inadequate. Um, and adding 1,700 houses to that will bring it to a complete breaking point. Um, uh, the, the point was also made that the, the promoters don't appear to be sharing their um, model, their traffic transport model. Um, at this stage, they're waiting until uh, the planning application actually goes in. I'm not quite sure if that's accurate or not, but um, I don't believe it's public yet. So um, um, uh, what else have we got? Um, the, yes, the, the, the comments really that um, the cycling infrastructure in Froome is non-existent already, so we really need some some extra in, emphasis on that. Um, and walking is also potentially is, is quite dangerous at times in certain areas. Um, the train station was a was a talking point. Um, the train station, being the only train station in Mendip, appears to be one of the things that's attracting potential development to Froome. However, the train services that run from Froome are considered completely inadequate. So if we're going to have any kind of development like this, then we really need much, much better services uh, and much more integration and, and kind of joined up um, transport links, etc. cetera. Um, I so, so much better links to Westbury and, and faster services to London, all those kind of things. Uh, and on top of that, also better cycle parking at the train station and uh, bus bus shuttle, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, the the some of the Barton ideas for for kind of um, keeping cars away were kind of considered from houses were, were considered you know quite good, but perhaps not radical enough. Actually, maybe we need to kind of get parking right away from the houses and actually have some completely traffic free areas of the development if we can, if it's going to go ahead. Uh, what else have we got? The the I think possibly the only other thing. I've got here is that um, if, if we're going to have a good development of this size in this part of town, then at the very least we should be having um, good links across the, the bypass, um, which which circles the outside of the town. I think they're they're talking about potentially a um, traffic lights or something like that. But you know we're suggesting that maybe a bridge or an, an underpass or or probably two um, to link up the the other the rest of of the countryside effectively to the residents via walking and cycling. I think that mostly covers it. Apologies I've missed anything to anyone. Excellent, thanks very much Paul. And finally the um, sustainable Sustainability and Energy Group which um, Peter kindly um, was, was, was facilitating. Thank you Steve. Um, there were a number of points raised, some of them were, were relevant to sustainability, others were, were more uh, general uh, relevance to the scheme uh, and related to the kind of planning process uh, that the uh, promoter of the scheme will have to follow. Uh, on sustainability, there was a general point uh, in terms of a concern about the loss of greenfield land uh, uh, as, as opposed to brownfield land and a concern about the, the, the number of, uh, of houses that are proposed. Um, a desire from, from one of our participants to see uh, the construction of properties at the highest standard of sustainability, possibly to what is known as passive house standard or something similar. Um, on on um, the solar farm, there were a couple of questions around the proposed solar farm uh, and they revolve really around the lack of detail that currently exists on, on that element of the scheme. Um, there were questions around uh, who will finance the development of the solar farm, who will construct it, who will be ultimately responsible for managing it and maintaining it. Um, and um, uh, there were some concerns expressed about uh, the possibly the high voltage nature of, of uh, the solar farm. I don't know what, what the, the precise specification will be. Clearly at the moment, there, there isn't that detail. Um, there was uh, a question about process. 
uh, relating to sustainability appraisal and environmental impact assessment. Um, a question about whether the promoter has actually done those uh, uh, exercises. Um, and a, a couple of more general points about process. Uh, one uh, about the opportunity for the, the, the public to get involved and make their views known throughout the entire planning process, not just this early consultation phase. Uh, and finally, a, a question about how we can ensure uh, that uh, the, the ultimate owners of the, the land uh, who will develop it out, how we can ensure that they follow the rules that are set at the point where the um, outline application is actually approved by the local planning authority. Um, so I think that just about covers the points that were raised. Quite a mixed bag, really, in, in terms of the the you know the the, the range of, of points. Um, but that was the uh, the feedback from the sustainability and energy group. Great, thank you very much, Peter. Um, there was some quite interested in um, diverse comments which are great I and mean, we'll, we'll take all those away and um, and I think the intention now is, is is to do a similar thing only hopefully you'll all be in different groups so you can discuss some of the other uh, aspects that you didn't get a chance to discuss on the first time around so um, Laura if we if we're open to doing that let's uh, do that quickly and uh, and then we can have a discussion thereafter Right, excellent. Um, welcome back, everybody. Um, I hope those breakout rooms were um, equally as informative. We'll quickly run through any um, any comments which uh, were different from the previous ones. Um, so we'll quickly run through the groups, and then we'll we'll try and get some um, some comments from the whole panel um, thereafter. So if I could start again with vision and principles, um, was that was that Addie Barclay or Jane? I start. I started last time. I'll start. Um, again, uh, just a, a, a distrustfulness in the translation of the design principles into the actual ground. Um, lots of similar kind of comments from last time, except uh, again that what needs to be included uh, is the uh, inclusive uh, for it to be inclusive for young adults, specifically with, with disabilities, where there is nowhere local for them to be uh, cared for, respite or other, um, and that there's two large care homes on the site and these need not just to be for older people. Okay, excellent. Thanks very much, Ali. Um, and moving on to open spaces and recreation. Is that Kate again? Lost Kate. Okay. But it would help if I unmuted, wouldn't it? Um, so um yeah the overall theme was much the same as the group before um however there was a discussion um around the design of the site and whether it actually reflected the post covid way of living and um the reflections that people have made having been through lockdown and looking for for living in in different ways um so there were shared spaces but there were there wasn't so much garden space there was uh, tiered buildings and um, there seems to be a move away from that in many other areas into smaller, into houses with gardens. Um, there was um, discussion around, um, in particular, the, the ecological impact on the site, whether the proposed back corridors would actually be the best um, route for for wildlife, including bats with light pollution, etc. There was a discussion around the actual placement of the solar farm, and um, it's not on this map, so that further exacerbates the loss of recreational space that is currently being used and has a further ecological impact. And in particular, the land um, that is being proposed um, is contrary to the best and most versatile agricultural land agreement, which is in place. I'm sure I haven't phrased that properly. Apologies for not doing that. Um, but we've, so we've noted all of that. Um, and then finally, there was a discussion around housing allocation and um, whether in fact Froome is the best place 
for housing to be cited and whether there are other areas of Mendip and other towns in particular that would create more sustainable opportunities in the longer term. Great. That's a summary. Great. And it's got some Thank great things. Um, uh, Heritage community with, with Sarah? Uh, yes, there was a lot going on in this particular group um, and uh, most of it not positive, I'm afraid. Um, the whole idea of uh, an isolated community essentially bolted on to the outside of Froome uh, and, and how does that, that then become part of Froome? How does that infrastructure work? Either it's going to be self-sustaining, uh, which is not built into the plan, or it becomes uh, you know, a little satellite community that doesn't have anything uh, that it can use and is just driving into town, using the infrastructure of this town and, and, and commuting outside of town. Uh, there doesn't feel that there's any responsibility upon the developers. This is just, for, it felt, it feels like it's an organisation who are built around making the land uh, worth a lot of money, but, but have no responsibility after that. So what's going to become of it after, after it's all sold? Uh, is that the, the, the whole question of is there a need for this housing came up in this discussion as well. There are all these pockets of housing being built already. Uh, Saxon Vale obviously is one of those and little pockets of development that are happening all around the town. And then how does that fit with the overall plan for the number of houses that we supposedly uh, need for Froome? Uh, the development itself is not felt to fit in with the historical architecture, the historical design of Room. We are not a town of four, four, four storey houses with three car parks. Um, and aside from the fact that the whole environmental scope of that area uh, is going to be destroyed, you know, it's a, it's a vital part of the uh, historical Selwood village, uh, uh, Selwood forest. It doesn't make any compensation for the historical landscape that we're going to be losing. The trees that are there are important habitats, important wildlife habitats, uh, and the, 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 you know there are there are remnants of ancient hedge, hedgerows there. We know that oak trees are the best habitat supporting trees that we have around here. It's going to destroy uh, corridors of wildlife that uh, you know historically are uh, 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 set up there that that, that make that uh, you know traversing of biodiverse biodiverse corridors possible. A lot of issues with that. Yeah, thanks very much. It sounds like it. Thank you. Um, and Paul, with the uh, the highways and active travel. Um, firstly, I need to check whether you can hear me. Can you yes, hear me? You all can. right. Yeah. Oh, Absolutely. good, good. If I start breaking up, let me know because um, I'm having a bit of trouble with the internet. Right. Um, yes. So uh, we the, our first discussion was really um, about the access points from the. Um, development potential development into town um, uh, one comment was that it was madness um, uh, we talked about the the idea that um, perhaps uh, if there was no vehicle access directly into town and we and uh, vehicles had to go out to the bypass and back in to get into town um, but we promoted or there were there were very good bus links and walking links cycling links directly into town then people would be less likely to use their cars um, but the response really was that the, the chances of more buses is highly unlikely. Um, the, the, there was a suggestion um, from one member that actually it would be quite commercial for bus companies to, to add links. But then um, the point was made that um, Edmund Park doesn't have any extra buses. Um, so why would the buses come to this new development? Um, also, it's considered too far away from the town for people to walk into town. Um, also, the point was made that the extra bus, extra traffic on the bypass actually might be a problem. Um, certain junctions, the Rodden Down Junction in particular, are already dangerous, and this development may make it worse. Um, the the uh, also a point was made that um, we really need good good links, active travel link, bus links to the station are absolutely critical, and they and that needs to be somehow rather than a kind of nice to have, it needs to be guaranteed somehow through this development. Um, we're not sure how. Uh, uh, and I think basically um, a lot of it, a lot of it was basically talking about the fact that it again it was it's just a huge development, um, unnecessarily large. Uh, the point was made that. Um, Potentially, this development will will have enough housing, which 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 will be more than 100% of Mendip allocation over the next 10 years. I think it is. Um, so yeah, just a, a huge development. I think that's it. Right. 
Thanks. Thanks, Paul. And finally, Peter, Peter Wheelhouse with the, uh, the sustainability and energy uh, discussion. Thanks, Stephen. I'll, I'll focus on some of the new points that emerged from this yeah, breakout session. <clears throat> So the, there was a concern that that the, the solar was pr proposed off-site as opposed to on roofs. Um, a couple of points about that. Uh, a question really uh, about a point that was made in the uh, consultation boards about electric vehicle charging points uh, being installed on plot. Um, we weren't sure as a group what that actually meant. Does it, does it mean each dwelling plot or does it mean say a much larger plot that that isn't clarified in the uh, in the brochure um some discussion around the loss of biodiversity uh and a, again a, a question for lva about where the the statement that there will be a 13 percent net gain in biodiversity where that comes from um a, a comment that possibly the technology that was being promoted is today's technology as opposed to tomorrow's technology. It's obviously going to take some time for this scheme to come to fruition. And maybe the focus should be on the technologies that are relevant to, to when the dwellings and other development actually comes to fruition. Um, a concern that actually um, many of these detailed matters may not come up until very much later in the planning process although they're being discussed now, uh, when it actually comes to specific proposals, they may not come forward until the reserve matters stage, as opposed to the next stage, which is the outline stage. And some general discussion about the um, where the housing numbers have come from, um, and, um, and that to a degree, uh, the government have set the targets for MENDIP to meet. Um, but, uh, um, there, there was a concern that actually this was a speculative development which isn't in, currently included in a local plan. So I think that probably sums up most of the, the new points that arose in this second session, Steve. Great. Thanks very much. Uh, thanks very much for that, Peter. Um, we have, um, we have a, a few minutes left, quite a bit, 10, 15 minutes left. Um, so what I'm going to ask is that if anyone has any comments which they'd like to make, which they didn't get, or they weren't in the group, but which um, which were discussing that point, um, please feel free if you raise your hand um, to, to to make those comments to the group. Um, the the developers aren't here. This is a Froome Town Council sort of uh, engagement. So really, the, the whole exercise here is to get your feedback and to get your comments. So. We may not actually be able to answer any uh, any questions, comments here and right here and now, but we will take them away and they will formulate our, um, our our response. So, if anyone does have any um, any comments uh, which haven't been raised already, um, please uh, please raise your hand and I'll try and spot you. I'm on two screens, so it may not be that easy. Uh, I've got James James Hollingsworth. <clears throat> Hello, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Good. Um, one point about uh, biodiversity was already mentioned. Uh, uh, there was it's not specified how uh, the extra biodiversity is going to suddenly appear. Um, biodiversity was referred to in the breakout meeting uh, or as being uh, uh, something about something about bats or pre preserving a particular species of bats. But biodiversity means just that it's diverse. It's a web of life that takes a long time to develop. Um, if the principles were to be realized it would be unprecedented especially on this kind of scale to preserve the web of life and that's very important uh, so it's it's more about single species it's about preserving many species okay um, yeah thanks very much okay. um point taken any any other um comments from anybody i'm desperately scanning the screen and i or if, if you don't want to raise a, a question in, in person, please uh, please feel free to put your questions or comments on in, in the chat facility and we'll get around to them as well at some stage. Uh, who's it? Um, I, I, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's worth me feeding this through the, the town council uh, route. Um, I've got my own routes to feed in my comments, as you know. But um, I really thought that the road layout going out of Little Keyford Lane uh, down Little Keyford Lane and that they're saying that that um, pinch point 
which is pretty much on the edge of the current um, settlement area, um, is to sort of stop people using Little Cupid Lane to go back into town. But um, it's, they are going to use it to come out of town. And so far, with the marketing material that we've seen, it only refers to their own site. If they want to have a whole load, when I asked a question um, last week, they said, oh, they're going to, um, on the town side of that pinch point, that they're going to, there's going to be a dedicated uh, pedestrian cycle lane. Well, if there's also going to be two-way traffic or scope for two-way traffic, they're going to have to widen that. So they're either going to have to cut into the hedgerow or, and or cut into the hedgerow on the other side of where opposite the bungalows going back towards um, the Marsden Estate. Now that wouldn't appear on their plans, but that would be an important point to raise in terms of access because this, yep. this is going to have a knock-on effect on areas outside of their particular site. And I just wanted that town, the town council to discuss that when they when they talk about this, um, because the outline, as Katie pointed out in our group, is really mainly about access and the content. Yeah. And all these fancy plans are not really something that's going to be of material consideration to amend it district planning board when they approve or not of this site. So, yeah. so, but those access issues and the knock on effect of the access issues um, and the transport and highways issues are things that Mendip must consider right early, or, 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 you know, right at the beginning. That's Thanks, Helen. We had we had picked up on that as well. And I know there's been quite a few conversations already. I'm sure that will come up next week at length. Um, is there any other uh, any other? I can't, I'm scanning hands. Please wave furiously if you want to. I've got. Uh, is that is that Rosie Ray? I see. Actually, her daughter Anna. Um, I'm a bit Hi, underprepared, Anna. sorry, and I haven't read everything. I haven't heard any mention of um, social or affordable housing at all. Um, and I wonder if not, why not? Or maybe there is going to be affordable housing, and that's why no one's mentioned it because it's already in the plan. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Jane, do you want to uh, comment on that? Uh, yes, um, the uh, consultation material uh, does make reference to the fact that they say they will be providing 30% affordable housing. Um, and Yes, I mean that, that that's what they're saying. Um, is that the extent of the of detail on it as well, or um, there won't there, there's no detail necessarily about where those particular houses will go and how many uh, rooms, you know, how many bedroom houses they will be at, at this stage. Um, that wouldn't necessarily be the level of detail that you would see in the outline application, um, but they are saying that it will be 30% and that will deliver 510 affordable homes um, and those would be uh, split tenure as you would expect in, in any development so some, some for rent um, and, and housing association and, and all the different vehicles that would be used um, but that, that's what I've taken from the, the consultation. Thank you Jane. Um, any other um questions any other comments so i'm sorry to go on about little keyford lane again but can i talk about the other side of little keyford lane or can i just I... can i just invite joe joe hammond first because he just oh. had his head up as you started talking Adam. sorry yeah. i will get back to you i promise that's all right um helen's probably got a better point to make than i have but i was just going to say um <laughs> can we just change the narrative a little bit about the way that we refer to what's going on um we keep saying they and they're going to do something but they are people who are basically parceling up bits of land to sell on to developers to then potentially deliver what might be in the plan. So they are not promising 30% affordable housing. They are just writing that into their plan. And so I, I just think it's just important because one, one of the things that hasn't been talked about too much is where this came from. No one in Froome has asked for it. Mendip haven't asked for it. We haven't asked for it. It is being sort of foisted upon us to then have this discussion. But the people who are proposing it are people who are going to make money out of this. So it's not the people who live on those fields right now who've just decided to come into them and sell their fields. It's people who've got actively gone to them to try and buy those fields in order to sell them on foot. 
That's all I want to say. Okay. Thanks for much. Very good point, Joe. Thanks very much. Um, Helen, over to you then. Sorry, it's a technical issue, and I will try and attend your Frimtown Council um, PAG meeting, but I'm not um, really supposed to speak at that, and I'm, and we don't, there isn't a speaking option anymore as those Zoom meetings, so I have to type everything in the chat. Um, so I will say it now, which is that um, on the other side of Little Keith, the pinch point coming um, into the site, what they're proposing to do is, and they're saying, they're bigging this up, saying, oh, it's going to be a greenway, that the um, that Little Keith Lane is going to turn into a greenway. In order to do that, they're going to swoop down and build a great big amount, uh, the, the road is going to go onto the um, what's now a field, they're going to take out a whole load of hedgerow there to go down into the field and then double back with a with a road going back across the greenway into what's uh, known as the FR7 site, which is the one between the end of the settlement area and um, a track going to what is currently Keeper Farmhouse. And um, there's a so they're going to be taking out a massive chunk of, of farmland in order to do that. And that just seems to be a ridiculous and very clumsy way to get into the FR7 field. And so I just think we need to look at all of their road networks and the, you know, the, the other things that Katie's ra raised as well, you know, all the access points and then what they're doing within the site as well. I, I'm not sure if that would be classified as an access point or if that's something that, that comes up at reserved masses. I should know and I don't. All right, thanks Helen. Um, anybody else, any other questions or comments? Oh. Can I make a comment, please, Steve? Of course, of course, John. Thank you. Um, can we just start from the beginning here, really? I, I think um, there's been lots of discussion, quite rightly, about the detail. But what Foom Town Council needs to really consider is that this will go to the planning board as an outline planning application. So Foom Town Council have to initially decide or give an opinion as to whether Froom needs this level of development, whether we need 7,000 more people living in Froom on such a development, whether we have the infrastructure and the highway infrastructure to cope with such a development. It feels to me that that's the, the starting point for any discussion that Froom Town Council needs to have. Uh, and we've heard tonight a lot about the detail and we've heard some level of discussion about the so-called need. So LVA talk about a significant need. They provided no evidence. As far as I'm concerned, there is no evidence out there to say that Foom needs this level of housing. I'm not saying we might need to expand, but not at the level that's being projected and being proposed. And that's what Foom Town Council, because they represent Foom residents, the whole of Foom, and the future of Foom as a town, and how that town is shaped in the future that the opinion they give will, will influence the planning board significantly. So I would want to ask Foom Town Council when they put forward their um, uh, thoughts on this, that the first principle they need to address with evidence and, and to substantiated evidence, which I don't think there is, about the need for such a development for Foom. Thank you. Thanks, John. And I'm sure that will come up next week at the... Um, extraordinary general meeting that we have where our um, our, our official uh, response will be um, you know hopefully be formulated and um, and I'm sure your that those those sort of comments will come up because I know uh, you know the whole idea of this meeting tonight is is to hear back from residents of Froome um, in the unfortunate circumstances that we are and Zoom is the only way we can do that at the moment. Um, uh, I see Julian's hand yeah, hi. Um, I'm glad John said that, and I just want to support him um, with that point of view, perhaps coming from a slightly different perspective. This is the, and I think Joe mentioned it as well, you know, this has been sort of brought upon us by a private company. It's not been asked for by Mendip, etc. Does Froome need this massive development uh, at the loss of such a great green space, wonderful views out towards the Wiltshire Ridge, which is the old Selwood Forest, which is our Froome heritage, you know. Um, and what, my personal thing is the environment. That's what I'm really interested in. I know we need housing. I know that people need somewhere to live. It's important. But such a mass development, is that required on such a scale as this? And that I think that is really such an important thing that John raised. My personal thing is the biodiversity, um, as has been mentioned by uh, 
uh, by James, you know, biodiversity means exactly that. It's not just a few animals, it's the whole, it's the whole gamut, the whole spectrum. There's some veteran trees there, I've been out recording them, I've recorded all the trees in that area. Um, and there's some quite special trees there. And I'm worried that they're not going to be retained because although it's not, it, uh, the plan says it's going to retain them, once that goes to development, the developers, how are you going to, how are you going to ensure that those, that those trees are retained in the plan? I don't think that you can, you know. So Thank I just you. want to mention that really. That's, that's Thanks very much, Julian. Thank you. Um, I'll take one more comment or question from anybody if anyone would like to say anything. If not, I think we're going to leave the chat facility open a little bit. And um, please, if you have any comments that you, you do want to feed back, either feed them back to, um, to myself or uh, from Town Council. Um, that is anymore. I know, Shane, you wanted to just mention something quickly. Uh, yes, <laughs> excuse me, a couple of AOBs. Uh, first thing is I, I put a link in the chat to the Stop uh, Soulwood Garden community website, which has got a lot of information on this. And the last AOB is just a reminder um, that we're that the Froome Hoedown is at the end of the month, 31st of October, 1st of uh, October. I see there's a lot of people here who are out with their hoes, but hopefully we're going to get a couple of hundred people out. So do join the Facebook group room ho down and uh get your hose out thanks steve can i add an aob as well then <laughs> about four -way allotment. just quickly an AOB meeting. come on not like, not very, not very, not not very quickly <laughs> very quickly foom town council it's unheard of the you, I know. there you go come on uh, Foom Town Council are part of the proposal to save the uh, green space at the back of Broadway, which was formerly the allotment. This week, half term, we're organising the Spot the Badger uh, activity event uh, in support of the campaign to save that last undeveloped green space. Uh, so you can get entry forms and go round shops in the centre of town. The entry forms are at Foom Town Council uh, and also at Foom Discovery Point. Um, but check the opening times. And also we're having a stall in the Westway precinct on Saturday, 10 till 2, and Wednesday, 10 till 2. So come down and have a chat with us and learn about the campaign. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank, thank you, John. Wish I got I, that I would, when I went to Mendip Council. I, I, I would like to, I would just like to confirm my support with John's previous comment about the planning application process and the fact that uh, there is no significant need you know, they haven't demonstrated the significant need. And I think that, I think he's right in saying that is a key point from a planning application situation to focus Thank you, on. Nick. Thanks very much. Okay. Thank you, Nick. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I think that's it. I've run seven minutes over, um, but uh, hopefully good? it's been a good discussion. Hopefully um, you've all been able to put your, um, your points across. Thank and, you. And I'll say again, if you do want to make any comments, please feel free to contact Frim Town Council. We will put them on. As I've said a couple of times, there is an extraordinary council meeting next Wednesday evening, um, set at the 28th at 17th, uh, 28th at 7 p.m. Um, and our full response to this consultation will be, will, will be made then. Um, thank you all for coming and um, have a very good evening. Good night. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Thanks Peter. Thank you for organising this. Thanks, Great. everybody, for your contributions. Good night. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Good night. Right. Keep safe. Bye. And keep Thank you. safe. Always. Keep See you at the weekend, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, I told them I'm not doing it.